CII, item 427, May 12, 2017. A quarter of a trillion dollars and Joe Mellon. Welcome to Today in iPhone. Yeah, I like it a lot. Today in iPhone. Hey, go Oh, yeah. Beautiful iPhone, which I never have out of my hand, and that I do everything with, and has become an extension of who I am. This episode of Today in iOS is brought to you by Casper. Get fifty dollars off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com/tii and using promo code TII. Welcome to the show. I'm your host Rob, and you are listening to the Today in iOS podcast. First of all, I want to thank Rowan for sending in the music you hear in the background. Rowan wrote. Hi, Rob. After submitting my son's song, I was reminded rather quickly that my 10-year-old, Michaela, really dislikes being one-upped by her big brother. She also used GarageBand on my iPad Pro to create this song. She named this one Awesome Beats. Thanks so much for playing my son's song on episode 426. He definitely is a happy camper. Regards, Rohan, Phoenix City, Alabama. Well, thanks to Rohan and your daughter. For the music, and folks, I will put the full song at the end of the episode. I also want to thank Tom for sending in the artwork for today's show. Tom wrote the following. Hi, Rob. For a short time, my local Apple store is in Bordeaux, France. Regards, Tom C. Well, thanks, Tom, for sending in this artwork. And folks, you can see Tom's artwork in the free TI app via the bonus button for episode 427 or at Instagram.com slash Today iOS and also at Facebook.com slash Today iOS. Tom's picture was the third to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of TII and the iPhone. Please, when taking a photo of yourself in front of your local Apple store, if at all possible, make a square picture. So I have to make them square for iTunes. And put the Apple store location on the photo if it's not already showing, along with TII or some Today and iOS branding. Thanks to the many of you that have already sent in photos. As always, send those pics to todayandios at gmail.com. And if you have some music you have created on your iOS device that you would like to share with the audience, please email it to me at todayinios at gmail.com and please make sure to include which app or apps you use to create said music. In this segment of How Wrong Were They? We have the following quote. Quote, Apple iPad, failure, joke, or fiasco. Pick one. Unquote. Linden Day Filler, millionface.com, 27th January 2010. I went to millionface.com to see what other gems of wisdom they had or if they were just a joke. But sadly, or not so sadly, they were just a failure, as their site is no more. Just saying. Just a little heads up, this week I am on the road, so I am using my portable mics, my labs, so it's a little bit different sounding. Okay, if you're an audiophile, a lot different sounding than my standard mic. The good news is this is the last time I'll be on the road for a while, so I probably won't have to do this again for quite some time. Last week, Apple had their quarterly conference call, so how did it go? Well, if you look at Apple stock then and look at it now, well, it went pretty well. Apple stock closed today, I'm recording this on May 12th, 10 days after the Apple call, at an all-time high of over $156 a share and a market cap north of $800 billion. Now, per the details from the call, cash on hand, over a quarter of a trillion, with a T, dollars. $256.8 billion, to be precise, up $10.7 billion for the quarter. In case you are keeping track at home, this is more than Google, Microsoft, and Amazon have combined. Or put another way, that is more than the combined market caps of Netflix, Tesla, and Libsyn. Apple revenue was $52.9 billion for the quarter, up year over year. iPhones sold in the quarter, $50.8 million. That was down from $51.2 million in the year over year quarter comparison. However, if you take into account changes in inventory, then Apple actually put a few more iPhones in customers' hands last quarter versus the year ago quarter. Actually, delivered to customer sales were 51.9 million units in the last quarter versus 51.6 million in the year ago quarter. If you are the type that likes to split hairs or look for silver linings, or split hairs to look for silver linings to be more accurate, then yeah, it was a good quarter. 
iPads sold last quarter were 8.9 million units versus 10.3 million in the same quarter a year ago. Apple said they had strong revenue growth and kept reinforcing that on the conference call. They said they had an increase in revenue for their services, for all the different versions of their services. Apple Pay was one thing they touted on the call and mentioned it was rolled out in Taiwan and Ireland last quarter. Apple Pay is now live in 15 markets with 20 million contactless ready locations with 4.5 million of those locations in the U.S. alone. Apple did update their stock dividend. It will go from $0.57 cents a share to $0.63 cents a share. If you have stock on May 15th, you will get the dividend on May 18th. One item of note, Apple Watch sales last quarter, according to Apple, were nearly double that of the same year ago quarter. Actually, here is a great quote from Tim Cook from the call. Quote, demand for AirPods significantly exceeds supply and growth in Beats products has also been very strong. In fact, when we combine Apple Watch, AirPods, and Beats headphones, our revenue from wearable products in the last four quarters was the size of a Fortune 500 company, unquote. So keep that quote in the back of your mind when someone says Apple's wearable product lines are not doing well. Nothing else really of note that jumped out at me from the call. I did dig into the transcript to see if I missed anything and three names not found anywhere on the transcript, Netflix, Tesla, and Libsyn. Just pointing that out when you're wondering what Apple could do with a quarter of a billion dollars. Heck, even car, automobile, and automotive were not even mentioned. But podcast was mentioned. Okay, it was mentioned at the end where they said the whole call would be available as a podcast. But at least it was mentioned. Suppose you are Apple and you have over a quarter of a trillion dollars laying around. What do you do with all this money? Why well, spend some of it on building better components for your devices, of course. Apple invested $200 million to support and develop revolutionary glass product or production methods. The money is going to Corning, yes, the same company making Gorilla Glass, and that at one point in time was looked at as a company Apple could do without. Uh, well, at least they thought so when they worked with a sapphire manufacturer. And by worked with, I mean tried to work with, but that company failed and then declared bankruptcy, which brings us to today's announcement by Apple that they will receive or be sending $200 million um, from Apple's new advanced manufacturing fund to, according to Apple, quote, foster innovation among American manufacturers, unquote. Apple says they are committed to investing at least $1 billion in U.S.-based companies as part of this fund. According to the money shot, quote, from the press release, Jeff Williams of Apple's new CEO said, quote, Corning is a great example of a supplier that has continued to innovate, and they are one of Apple's longstanding suppliers. This partnership started 10 years ago with the very first iPhone, and today, every customer that buys an iPhone or iPad anywhere in the world touches glass that was developed in America. We're extremely proud of our collaboration over the years, and we are investing further with Corning, who has such a rich legacy of innovative manufacturing practices, unquote. The full press release read like a huge Apple supports U.S. jobs flag-waving stunt, I am sure it has nothing to do with the Apple v. Qualcomm fight going on where Qualcomm wants to get an injunction to stop the sale of iPhones. Nope, nothing to do with that at all. On May the 4th be with you, Apple said, May tvOS Beta 5 be with you, but only if you are wise in the ways of app development. What did this special update bring? Not much. Seems to be just bug fixes and optimizations. We went 12 days between episodes and, well, strangely enough, no new betas for iOS 10.3.2. So maybe this coming week we'll see the gold master for 10.3.2. Fingers crossed. Apple has a nice how to take photos on an iPhone 7 tutorial page. This includes the following how to shoot tutorials. A great portrait. A close up. A vertical pano. Without a flash. Action a selfie with the timer, a unique angle, a piece of cheesecake with candlelight, stills while filming, with street light, a bold and simple image, 
during golden hour. A one hand selfie. What are you doing with the other hand? A selfie. A piece of cheesecake reflecting the sunlight off a serving plate. A sunset silhouette. A group portrait. A backlit subject. And finally, a piece of cheesecake with a timer in pano mode. You want to find these tutorials, there's a link in the show notes, or just go to apple.com slash iPhone slash photography dash how dash to, or again, go to the link in the show notes for episode 427. And a shocker to exactly no one, Apple confirms that WWDC's opening keynote will be on June 5th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Apple sent out invitations to the press this week. Thanks, Lisa and Stephanie, for the invite. I am sure it's just waiting in my mailbox back at my house, and I will see it once I get back from the Microsoft Build conference. You know, the developer conference where Microsoft invited Today and iOS to come out and cover this week. And I did actually send an email off to Lisa and Stephanie at Apple's PR just to make sure I did not miss it if they did send me uh, an email invite this week. You know, with me being so busy and all up here the past week at Microsoft Build here in Seattle, it would have been easy to miss it. But the whole thought of Apple not treating podcasters as well as Microsoft is, is just so far-fetched, right? Right, Lisa? Right, right, Stephanie? I'm sure they just snail-mailed me the invite and it's waiting for me in my mailbox back in Kansas City. Apple has supposedly started a three-year repair replace policy for smart keyboards for both size iPad Pros. This in response to some of those smart keyboards not working with all keys, kind of an issue. Or some keys repeating, or if you're not looking, random stuff just starting to type out for you. Apple will supposedly service any qualifying smart keyboard free of charge within three years of the date it was originally purchased, which right now will obviously covers all smart keyboards. So if you have one that is acting up, now is a good time to get it repaired for free. FYI, this is not an officially announced thing on Apple's website, but if someone gives you grief about getting it repaired when you go to an Apple store, just go to the show notes for episode 427 and show them this link or you know, ask them to escalate your request to their supervisor. And of course, if you're a blue shirt and you want to verify this, just let me know. For Apple TV 4th Gen, Universal Search just added a few more apps. It supports Spike, Nickelodeon, and Nick Jr., which is great if you are looking for an episode of Peppa Pig. Siri and Universal Search now have you covered. I want to once again thank Casper for supporting our show in 2017. We love our Casper mattress. It is by far the best mattress in the house. And I really, really am bummed tonight's episode goes out when I'm on the road. Usually I get to sleep on the Casper mattress after I finish an episode. But don't just take my word on how great their mattresses are. There are over 20,000 reviews on Amazon and Google with an average of 4.8 out of 5 stars. It is quickly becoming the Internet's favorite mattress. Why did they get such great ratings, you ask? Well, Casper Mattress combines supportive memory foams to create an award-winning sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. Casper is an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price that an in-house team of engineers spent thousands of hours developing. It was designed, developed, and assembled in the U.S. They offer sizes from twin to California kings with a great price, and with Casper, you get a 100-day risk-free trial period. You don't like it, you get your money back, and they come and pick it up and donate it to charity. If you go to casper.com slash TII and use promo code TII, you will save $50. Terms and conditions apply. Oh, and that TII is all lowercase all when you're putting the promo code in. This is an American-made mattress with delivery right now for the U.S. and Canada only, and it is free delivery. And when said mattress is delivered, it's from UPS in a squarish box that you think there's no way there's a mattress in there. But you get a cool little tool, and you cut it open, and then, boom, the mattress pops out, expands to form. It is really cool. Just Google Casper Mattress Unboxing. You order online, and it's delivered to your door. So no need to go out and get any pollen or hay fever. Or you don't have to leave your house. You can just be an introvert and get a great mattress. Again, to save $50 off, go to casper.com slash TII and use promo code TII, all lowercase, on the promo code. Again, casper.com slash TII, promo code TII to save $50. 
Thanks, Casper, for the great mattress and for sponsoring this show. Hi, Rob. My name's Adam, calling from Australia. I've got a question for you or your listeners, wondering if anyone uh, knows about the ongoing development of Downcast for iOS. Up until around February this year, the developer was engaging with uh, the community and after that, any uh, questions, tech support or anything like that that people write in just hasn't been acknowledged at all. So just wondering if anyone knows if the app's still going to be developed or uh, whether it's dead. I'm just asking you, Rob, since you've had uh, George on the show at different times, if you could uh, put something on the show, that would be great. Thanks a lot. Hi, Adam. Thanks for the voicemail message. It looks like the dev is working to finish up his next major upgrade, and that's version 3.0. He may have himself in lockdown mode so he can finish this update. FYI, per the dev of Downcast, his name is Seth. I reached out to him to confirm he is just heads down on version 3.0, and if there's nothing wrong with the app, I haven't heard anything back from him yet. But if I do hear anything back from him, I will update it on a future episode. Switching gears, a tip from very long-time listener Chris. Quote, to backspace on a calculator, it is not on the keypad. But to backspace, just swipe in the number field to the right or to the left to remove one digit at a time. Try it. Regards, Chris in London. Brilliant. It works like a charm. Swiping either left or right will do the same thing and delete the last digit. So you can swipe left and then back right and it will delete two digits. Hey Rob, why is no one talking about the latest iPad Pro still having the A9X processor? I was all geared to replace my original iPad Pro, but when it released the most recent version without the A10X chip, I was really disappointed. Thanks for the great show. Regards, Steve in Virginia. Hi, Stephen. I am not sure um, why they didn't do it. It was surprising. And some at the time said, well, this is because there is a major update coming in February. And then it was a major update in March. And then it was April. And then WWDC. And, well, more than likely now September. Yes, very strange that the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus both have the A10, but the iPad Pro is still sporting an A9X. Some speculate in the fall, the iPad Pro will do a two-generation jump to the A11X. I don't speculate. I just think now that has to happen. Apple needs to keep the iPad Pro at the top of the line of the iOS devices, at least processor-wise. So expect the September announcement with the A11X processor. There's a blog post out there on May 1st titled, Major apps abandoning Apple Watch, including Google Maps, Amazon, and eBay. The article talks about how in the last few weeks they have seen the latest update of some big-name apps ditch support for Apple Watch. I read this article prior to going to Microsoft Build, and at Microsoft Build, I talked to a bunch of app devs and those providing services for apps. And this by no means is a scientific survey, just a casual one. And almost all of the people I talked to said they were not interested in developing for Apple Watch or stopped as well. Granted, I'm at Microsoft Dev Conference, but all those I talked to were still developing for iOS. Google Maps support was removed, and Google did say it would return again in the future, but didn't give a date. I think this point to WWDC and the next version of watchOS is a key point for Apple. This is not the time for Apple to take baby steps like they will for iOS 11. iOS 11 is going to be a very minor update comparatively. Nope, for Apple, watch OS 4.0. When announced at WWDC, they need a grand slam. Not a single, not a walk, not a hit by pitch. A grand slam. As interest is definitely waning in those that I talk to about Apple Watch development. By the way, have I mentioned recently that the TI app has a Apple Watch support, including being able to get episodes of TII downloaded right on your Apple Watch for playback when your iPhone is nowhere around? Hey, TII is supporting Apple Watch. And speaking of TI app, uh, we added in the last update an alarm clock. Yes, that's right. You can get your alarm clock in the TI app to wake you up to the latest episode. 
go to the list of episodes and then tap on the menu button in the upper left, then tap on alarm, it says it's in beta mode, then pick the time that you would like to have yourself woken up by an episode of TII, and that really is it. Uh, you can, or you can select an older episode, or you can select the most recent episode, which would, well, the most recent one would be this one. You even get a snooze function. You know who you are that asked for this feature. You are welcome. And I hope your significant other understands why I am what they will hear tomorrow morning when your alarm clock goes off. A bunch of rumors this past week about supposed leak photos of an iPhone SE 2017 back panel where the flash seems to be moved below the camera instead of next to it. Supposedly, these rear panels are made of glass and not metal. The name might also be iPhone SE 2. Some other specs that people are guessing at, and I mean getting from a person in the know, are a 12 megapixel rear camera, a 1.2 megapixel front camera, the A9 chip. And really, that is just guesswork at best. One rumor I read said that the iPhone SE 2017 or iPhone SE 2, whatever you want to call it, was going to quietly update on the Apple website either this coming week or the following week. And at that point in time is when they would roll out iOS 10.3.2. We'll see if that person is right. One of the rumors swirling around this past week that I hope is true is that Amazon Prime app will be coming to Apple TV. It is really annoying when bulk watching a series like The Americans on Amazon Prime and you're using AirPlay mode from your iPhone into Apple TV that every, oh, 10 or 15 minutes it drops the connection and then you got to go back and reselect it. And what a pain. It'll be nice to have a native Apple TV app for Amazon Prime. Of course, it's just a rumor from people familiar with the talks and those people claim Apple and Amazon are in talks and close to finalizing a deal to finally bring Amazon Prime to Apple TV App Store in the next quarter. Again, the rumor is it would be third quarter when this would happen, and I sure hope that means before August, because August, of course, is when the tick makes its appearance on Amazon Prime. El Seed and Chairface Chippendale combined cannot keep me from bulk consuming the goodness of the tick that is so good it makes other goodness look bad. Spoon! We are less than a month away from WWDC keynote, and that means time to put speculation out there for iOS 11 into full gear, along with other speculation of what will be announced. First, some idiot, really, some idiot at JP Morgan said Apple will preview the iPhone 8. Uh, no. Okay, now that we have the ridiculous out of the way, let's talk about some iOS 11 features speculated and hoped for. And let's start with this email from a listener. Hi, Rob. Just curious to know what you and all the TII listeners think on what big features will come with iOS 11. Since WWCC is around the corner, I think a small feature for iOS would be the same feature that came with Mac OS last year. Drop the number and go further with, and unify the name. If it's Mac OS San Francisco this year, for example, then it should be iOS, uh, then iOS 11 would be iOS San Francisco. What do you think? Regards, Scott M., Northlake, Illinois. Well, Scott, I'm not sure I like the naming part of the name. I, I can never remember what name came in what order. And it's not like Mac OS just started with names. Before they were named after California tourist traps, they were named after cats. I hope they stick with just the number. One feature I want to see, and this is a repeat from last year, which was a repeat from the year before, and so on, and so on, and so on. It's, it's something I've wanted to see for a while, and that is passcode-protected folders. You put in the apps that you want to keep from the kids um, and put your passcode on it, and boom. And that could be work apps, or it can be HBO, or something like that. Some of the rumored new features making the rounds are group FaceTime chat for up to five people, peer-to-peer -peer Apple Pay, intelligent and automatic low power mode. Essentially, you'll see how you turn off items and it'll kind of get your understanding of what you do, and then it will save power by adapting to your preferences. 
Many are speculating that Siri will get smarter, better, which is like saying the next iPhone will have a better camera. Of course it will, and of course Siri will get better. It's, it's a four-horse race now between Google's version and then Cortana and then Alexa from Amazon and Cortana from Microsoft, and then you got Siri. And many would say right now, Siri is doing a lot of looking up others' skirts as they climb further and further ahead of her. And if we're going to be Captain Obvious here with Siri improvements, well, we might as well remain Captain Obvious and say Apple Maps will get better too. Apple may make workflow native in iOS 11 is another rumor running around. There are multiple posts with really in-depth analysis on why or why not this will happen. I think it would be great to make it a native app, but I'm not so sure that will happen. And it's still a pretty geeky app, so I'm not sure if it's ready for the masses or maybe more appropriately to say, I'm not sure if the masses are ready for workflow. I would also expect there to be a set of new features just for the iPad Pro announced. So something, again, to differentiate the iPad Pro from the rest of the iOS product lines. I think it would also be a safe bet that iOS 11 will only be available on 64-bit machines, which could release iOS 11 from some legacy restrictions and really improve overall performance. Hey, give us a call. 206-666-6364. That's 206 Moon Dog, or send an email to todayinios at gmail.com and let us know the one or two or more features that you want included in iOS 11. Originally, I didn't think Apple would release any hardware at WWDC. Just four OSs to update it, it's a lot. But one piece of hardware rumor for WWDC that might have a chance of happening is Apple announcing an Echo competitor, which would, of course, be controlled by Siri. Ming-Chi Kuo uh, led the charge on this rumor this last week, saying it will cost $179, have one woofer and seven tweeters for the speakers, will support AirPlay, and will likely have a screen. Screen rumor comes from what Phil Schiller said in an interview, that there are times when using a voice assistant device that having a screen will be preferable. Well, actually, Phil said the following, quote, I have yet to see any voice-only games that, for me, are nearly as fun as the ones that I play on my screen. And so I think voice assistants are incredibly powerful. Their intelligence is going to grow. They're going to do more for us. But the role of the screen is going to remain very important to all of this, unquote. Or, yeah, having a screen will be preferable. Is a Siri speaker coming? Yes. Yes, it is. Is it coming or is it going to be announced on June 5th? Maybe. Microsoft announced at the build that a partnership with Harman Kardon um, was going to happen and that basically they're going to have a competitor to the Echo and Google Home. Again, Apple will have to step up the game for Siri because right now Siri is behind those other three for functionality and two of them have already fully released integrated voice controlled products and the other basically announced it this past week. One last rumor on WWDC and this is a hardware one is that Apple will announce a new iPad Pro. I really think this is just the same people that said it would be in February then it'll be in March then it'll be in April and now they're saying WWDC and next month they'll say early September. Heck, we might even get one or two of those reports of a special August event. Yeah, those are BS. But each year around middle of June or so, there is that rumor of a special August event. So far, that rumor has been over. And I think the iPad Pro 2 rumor for WC, yeah, that's just throwing darts at a board. No chance. At Microsoft Connect in November, Microsoft announced Visual Studios for Mac as a preview release. And at Microsoft Build this week, Microsoft announced that it is out of beta and Goldmaster fully released. From Microsoft, quote, We are happy to announce the release of Visual Studio 2017 for Mac. Visual Studio for Mac is a new member of the Visual Studio family, enabling developers on Mac OS to develop apps for mobile, web, and cloud with Xamarin and .NET Core, as well as games with Unity, unquote. 
with Visual Studio's developers can create apps for iOS, tvOS, watchOS, macOS, and Android plus more. Microsoft's Visual Studio IDE is available now for download. It is free for the community version. There's a pro version that's just a little over 500 a year and then a enterprise version for 3K a year. As I mentioned earlier, I am in Seattle this week. I was flown out and put up by Microsoft to come and cover their big developer conference build. This is the second year in a row Microsoft has brought Today in iOS out to their developer conference, and I want to say thank you to them again for this opportunity. They brought out some other tech podcasters as well, and it's really nice to see Microsoft understand the value of podcasters. And this year, there were three rooms set up for us to record from, so it was very, very nicely done. I was able to record a few interviews this week, and I have one of them already edited, and will have it in this episode. It runs about 29 and a half minutes. It is with Joe Mellon, Senior Program Manager at Microsoft, and is very, very light on programming. And it's more conversation, talking about Joe's background, his podcast, yes, he's a podcaster, and the startup world. If you like Silicon Valley, you will appreciate this episode. And I highly recommend everyone to listen, even if you never plan to become a developer. Some good tips in there and some recommendations. For the sites we talk about, links will be in the show notes for episode 427 over at todayinios.com. Here we go. Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. All right. For the audience, just introduce yourself who you are and what you do at Microsoft. Sure. So my name is Joe Mellon. I am a senior program manager, which basically means that I work uh, with developers and designers to help make a good product. And the product I'm working on is something called Visual Studio Mobile Center, which is basically a tool set for mobile developers, including iOS developers, to help them make great apps. And what was your path to Microsoft? I, I see there was Xamarin in your background. Is that your yeah, intro? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I uh, had actually done a couple startups myself. And then I wanted to work at something a little more established, and so I joined Xamarin. Uh, and then we continued there for about a year, and then uh, we got the good news that Microsoft had purchased Xamarin. And so you can't get more established than that, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went from literally a one a one person one person startup to uh, you know growing that, and then joining a hundred person startup, and then also a two hundred thousand person. Startup. <laughs> that is Microsoft. All right. Yeah, and we're at Build here in 2017, and yeah, it's amazing how many people there are here, yeah. and how big the keynote was, and how yeah. many people. I, amazing. What got you into programming? I think it was the first thing I took a programming class uh, while I was at uh, university, and at first I didn't I didn't quite get. Oh it. come on! Don't be so modest. Which university? Uh, uh, UC it? Berkeley. Yeah, uh, th yeah. This was an undergrad. I did. I ended up graduating in physics at UC Berkeley. So I went to UC Berkeley, and I uh, and I had started, and because I'd done like a little bit of programming in high school, mostly like web stuff, and I had like online store for a business that I had, things like that. And then all of a sudden, we actually learned Scheme, which is uh, not <laughs> not, a, not a heavily used language anymore. But basically, it was like one of those things where it's kind of like the Matrix, where you like you see it all of a sudden, like I was not really getting it, not really getting it. And then all of a sudden I would just get it. And then I just started thinking in code and then like I would be programming and then it would be nighttime mm -hmm. and like it had been eight hours. And I was just like, whoa, that's a, you know, like you're in it. And I was just like, man, this is awesome. And so I've been pretty like, I've been basically programming or uh, working with uh, helping people use new technologies, things like that since. Thinking in code, it's, yeah. it's a good feeling. I remember that my, I, I'll date myself back to basic days and back to Assembler 6502. Sure. And when you can get to that point where you think in code, it's so yeah. much easier. Yeah, it's just like, it's more, it just also gets much more fun. Because, you don't want to stop. Yeah, no, it's just like, oh, this, then that. And like, at least the way my, at least my brain works is just like it, like just disassemble, like it disassembles problems into their sub, sub parts. And then all of a sudden you start adding things together and then, you make something and you get about 90% done with it and then you realize you could have done it differently and it's like, you know, then you write it a second time and it's like a third of the code and, uh, you know, it just starts. And, th like, and then you get to the point where you use pieces of code for unintended purposes. Like you realize, like they were designed for something and then you realize you can do them for something completely different and or use them for something completely different and then all of a sudden just like new worlds open up. So it's pretty cool. So you obviously enjoy coding. You said you had a startup. 
what was one of the startups? After, uh, so I went to another <laughs> college called Stanford University. Okay, for so my, I was <laughs> say, you, you, uh, okay. Uh, for uh, grad school. And uh, I'd gone there because I, I knew I wanted to get into the entrepreneurship ecosystem. And uh, I was looking at kind of like the people that success was expected from. And uh, Stanford graduates were one of those, one of those groups of people. And so I decided to go there, you know, worked pretty hard to get in. Anyways, after graduating, I teamed up with a person from the business school and I had been working for my master's thesis on basically like helping people without resumes get jobs, mostly in the construction, the light industry uh, fields. And so uh, my co-founder, uh, Pablo Fuentes and I founded a company called Proven. Um, it was called Worker Express at the time. But uh, basically, we pivoted a couple of times, and now it's called Proven.com. It's still, still a valuable, uh, you know, a good, a viable uh, business today. If anybody's out there does hiring for a small business, check out Proven.com. Okay. So basically, that was one. We did the whole Silicon Valley, raise money, you know, grow a team, lose the team, grow a team again, you know, <laughs> pitch people on an idea, the idea being completely horrible, change the idea, you know, the, 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 whole, the whole thing. So yeah, so if anyone is watching Silicon Valley, yeah. you have to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah, like uh, that, that TV show is, it actually happens. The only thing is that when you've actually lived it, it's not just funny, but it's simultaneously also painful because you, like, you've been in it. So it's like painful and funny at the same time when you've done it. <laughs> Today sure. uh, at Microsoft, you've gone, you went through Xamarin, you know, you're Microsoft and you, what do you do on a daily basis? What, what, who are you working with? What is your core responsibility? I am one of the, like, I guess, group PMs for, uh, or I guess it's PMM. So I manage PMs for product a, managers. Uh, yes, product managers for this project called Visual Studio Mobile Center. My team is responsible for like the shared services. It's kind of like the things that glue all of our features together or all our services together. So like things like when you sign up, like you have an account, things like we have a API or an application program interface, like things that are kind of behind the scenes that kind of allow you to use our products. So th these are things that I'm responsible for. And then we have, I have a couple of great PMs on our team that are actually like in the trenches, you know, writing specs and doing all these things and talking with users so that um, the developers know what to build and also the designers know how to design things. And then basically my job now is to just make sure that their jobs are easy and that, you know, they're going in the right direction and then also just be of service to them to uh, be successful. At Connect, sure. Microsoft announced Visual Studios for Mac. Yes. And today at Build, they said it's now Goldmaster out of beta and yep. available to the masses. Uh, that team has just been like really like heavily talking with users and just, you know, learning. I think also just the, the new mantle of, you know, Visual Studio as opposed <laughs> to, you know, something else like the previous one, Xamarin Studio, like, you know, it has a big opportunity for them or it is a big opportunity for them to really show up and create a product because Visual Studio is such a very strong IDE and it's such like a great reputation that now they kind of have a very high bar. So I know it's been a great opportunity and challenge for that team. Well, I know a lot of Mac users are very happy to have that natively. Yeah. Not have to run virtual <laughs> environment or have a second computer for yep. that. Yep. So I, I, I know a few listeners of my show that said, yay, when it was announced last time that they yeah. could get rid of their PC. No offense. My no offense. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's tough carrying around two laptops. Yeah, it's yeah. Heavy. I, it I get out. it. I get it. I get it. And yeah. Some totally. people just don't like working in the virtual world. Yep. Um, and I'll, I'll just say this, and we'll, we'll get into Visual Studios in the in next episode uh, a little bit more, but for our listeners, they're probably going to go with the community free, but then there's also Pro, which is five thirty nine a year, and Enterprise 3K a year, and I'll talk about that more in future episodes. But I want to talk a little bit, get away from Microsoft here. And sure. You're a podcaster. I, in fact, am a uh, aspiring podcaster. I am uh, you know, have a lot to learn, but yes, currently it's been about a year so far. Right. Built in a day, yep. your podcast. Tell the listeners a little bit about your podcast. So. I, found, I found this is really a great podcast, so, so tell Thank them you. about it. Um, so I actually met a gentleman in Canada who I've not actually met in person. He was named Jevin Maltese, okay. and he is my co-host. I still, it's been, it's been, we've been working together for about a year and a half. We still met in person, but basically, we're both passionate about helping people kind of test their assumptions about their businesses. And uh, so we just thought maybe we'd have do a podcast where we'd have people that were you know starting businesses. This could be anything from 
you know, a nail salon or something like that locally, or maybe even like a software company that's, you know, more on the internet. And we'd invite them onto our show and we'd help them formulate a test of something that they could like kind of test to like learn about something about their business. And then we'd coach them how to do it. They'd go back and do it. They'd go out, you know, in the world and test something about their business. And then um, they'd come back and report what they learned. Right. And yeah. that's what I loved about your format was you introduced the people, you talked about it, you told them, here's an idea for a test. Then it's like, okay, we'll be back in about 10 seconds, which was really like three or four or a week later. Yeah. And then you come back and, and talk to them about how the test went, or in some cases, didn't, didn't go. go. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Which I thought was really unique format, yeah. because as a listener, you're like, oh, I really don't want to wait a week. I don't want to wait till the next episode, but oh. It's, it's, if it's magic, just 10 seconds, yeah, it's right. 10 seconds. Let's see, no what, reason, see what happens. Right. Yeah. Time shifted. No reason yeah. not to do it. I have to admit, one of the ones, I think it was episode 15, eulogy writing yeah. business. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> That's unique. We don't, yeah. We, uh, this, I think there's a, a group of, uh, of uh, people from, I think it was Australia. It was either Australia or New Zealand. And they called in. And they were also calling in in the middle of the night. And so they're, you know, they're off at an odd time. But yeah, they, uh, they were looking at businesses. And they were just like... We think that the eulogy writing business could be something that could be brought online. And um, so uh, we just dove in and started testing. There's a, <laughs> you know, we, you know, we just try to, you know, we, we take what comes and uh, try to help them out. So hopefully they'll branch out maybe to like best man writing. And, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, as I remember, that one didn't end up with a successful test <laughs> because what they found is that during the time of that a eulogy would need to be used you know or created it's kind of a stressful time people didn't have a lot of time to like google best eulogy writing right. service or like some way of advertising so yeah they, they found that it was not a viable business yeah um, so can go best man writing yeah, yeah people have time they know in six yeah. months there's a wedding exactly and get stressed yeah and so exactly googling. those are the things it's like that's kind of our goal with that is we want to get people to fail early so they can quickly like move on to something that actually does work. So someone has a business idea and they want to get on your show. How would yes. they do that? Because they uh, tweet us or they, uh, yeah, basically tweet uh, Built in Day or Joe Mellon or Jevy J E V Y, and I think we have our email addresses up on the website Built in the Day Podcast com. How have you found people so far? I mean, how uh, we you? actually this is actually something I would probably share with your podcasting tips for everyone also okay. as well is that we actually have a person Shane who's on our team that we employ for a couple hours each week and basically it's his job to go get us guests so he goes around to different Facebook groups different things like that posts our episode asks people to listen to it and then if they are like if they're interested and they actually have a business idea things like that then he schedules them and we use uh, something called Calendly mm -hmm. which is like how yep. we uh, schedule the actual meetings so doing a podcast has been interesting like over time we've tried to streamline it so right now all my efforts are just when we're actually recording so none of the like back office posting and editing and all those things I don't, I don't, you know, yeah. let, let go of those now. So, so who's doing the editing for you? Then? So then we also, we found another person on Odesk and we have uh, another person that we so you, pay to do editing. So you just show up to the so show. So we show up to the show. Do a little research. And, <laughs> I and try it, to, try to be in a, try to like, you know, have coherent sentences, you know, the odd good idea and then uh, go, go from there. Of the businesses that you've reviewed on the show, which one did you like the best? There was a toiletry in a box. Uh, or sorry, t toilet paper in a box, like a subscription toilet paper business in the UK that was working on it. So like they would, you know, mail you toilet paper every X periods of time. And uh, that was a that was a fun one. Uh, it, just like getting or, like that one, I guess. And there's another one that we had that was a kombucha. Do you, have you were drinking kombucha? It's like no, a, I, I've it, heard of it. I don't, yeah, it, never. It, it's, it's basically like if you really want to spend a lot of money on a fermented tea, but it's not alcoholic, but you want to spend seven dollars on a bottle of something. I you think my wife, yeah, that they have, uh, isn't that like the black and yellow label? Yeah, they, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, I think they're, I know they're, which one. Yeah. they're going, they're going up, but uh, it's kind of like a craft, it's a craft beer for non-alcoholic mm -hmm. people, I guess. But anyway, so they, they, we had a kombucha company come on and part of our testing is we like, we, we suggested that they go out to a yoga studio and just like hang out outside with a, with a card table and they'd have kombucha and they'd have two different brands. One was like a more like, I think it was called R Revive or something like that. And the other one was like a Go Big or something like that. Like something about like it was more like a club. Were like, they making it or they were yeah, trying? Yeah, so they were actually making it. Okay. And they were trying to figure out how to brand it. 
And so they actually like had audio recordings from the people at the yoga studio selecting which brand to choose. So it was the same. It was actually the same yeah, drink, same, but same they drink. just called it something different. They called it something different. And by cause of the name, they saw which one. Pe- yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So just like things like that where like people are actually going out and actually talking to other humans. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. I know. Those scary, those scary people. Those scary, scary people. Customers. No, don't I know. To them. Just like, sell to them. Wouldn't want to actually talk to a customer. We just want to have them magically send you money. Any issues with doing a podcast working at Microsoft? Some companies, I won't say the fruit company yep. that's in Cupertino, don't look wise. You know, they, they kind of frown on that. But sure. Um, I haven't, I mean... I think also uh, my podcast is not directed at our user group. It has really doesn't have a lot of direct overlap with our product. I think that if I was doing, let's say, like an iOS podcast, I would probably be doing it like in the context of our marketing department or something like that. But yeah, for for mine, which is like agnostic of technology, it's uh, Are you doing it more as a hobby, just having fun. Yeah, I just like I've I've always liked uh, giving back to the community, and basically this means that like once or twice a week. I get to go meet some entrepreneur, help them figure out something, learn about them. And like, it's also a great way of just kind of staying abreast of like what people are working on. You know, there's a lot of people right now doing or like a lot of people that were doing one on one like coaching or tutoring that are now moving into making online courses because they realize that like if they make an online course and they sell it, they don't have to spend any time doing it. So they're trying to like move their knowledge mm-hmm. into a video format. And so it's interesting, like seeing some trends in you know different people uh and like different kind of small business moving more to like more like a tech platform if someone has an app idea would you guys review that on a show oh yeah sure yeah i mean like most app ideas like most people come to me and they hear oh you work with apps i got an app idea for you my response most of the time is don't build an app because like most people think of an app like okay like you know, it's an app. Apps are cool. Apps are successful. Really, apps are just a way of creating a behavior change or creating some value to a user. And the user value may be better served or the user might get more value in a different form besides an app. But if you create an app, aren't VCs going to throw money at you? <laughs> I mean, right? I think, just that, I think it was about just... like six years ago, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's possible. And if you were in a the very f- small area of the world, that was very possible. Um, a little bit later today, you know, now, it, you know, it's pretty common. Like, you make an app. They're like, great. You go and pitch them. You might have a meeting with them. Great. And then they're like, come back when you got, you know, 10,000 daily active users. And then you come back with 10,000. And then they say, come back with 100,000. Yeah. And then maybe they start giving you some money. There was a great scene in uh, one of the recent episodes of Silicon Valley where they hijacked the VC yeah, where he hijacked a VC and, and he's like, "Wait, you're not my Uber driver." And, yeah. and he's like, and then he's pitching the app, the, the app, and like, and, and then you know, the guy's so you know, the, the VC's gotten kidnapped, and at the end, he goes, "Hey, here's my card. If you yeah. do get over a million, you know, give yeah. me a call." Yeah. No, I mean, there's a a, a famous thing with investing where uh, when you first get into pitching, you you're really worried that they're going to tell you no, but really what they say is they think they say, "Man, this is awesome. This is awesome. It's too early for us, but it's awesome." Let's keep in touch because really that's a no for an investor because they have no, they have no value out of telling you no, because if all of a sudden tomorrow you do show up with a million users, they want to be your best friend and they want to be like, Hey, I believed in you from day one. Take my money like that. That's what they're looking for. I've had a couple of friends right now that are just starting fundraising and it, 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 it's, it's pretty, it's like pretty, uh, common for them to come back and be like, ah, you know, I'll ask them, how's it going? And they're like, oh man, it's going great. I got all of these people. They're like waiting for me to get a lead investor and then they're totally in and they're, you know, they, they can't wait to have another meeting. And like after about a you know, while of doing it, you realize that that means that nothing. It means literally nothing. So if you're an investor, don't say no, just say, oh, I'm good idea. Good idea. So, <laughs> there so are, there are, I, I would say there are like, there are only a handful of investors that actually do say no. And I, those are the ones that, like, personally for me, as like someone that's gone through the game a couple times, it's very refreshing because it's like they have, you know, they're they're being straight with you. If people come to me and they'll pitch me, I got this idea for a podcast. Yeah. I think it's going to make, you know, it's going to make a ton of money. I think I'm going to get a lot of advertising. I'm like, yeah. what's the idea? I'm like, mm, well, there's three of them like that already, and, yeah. and and the best one of them is 750 downloads an episode. And so you're not going <laughs> to, if you're going to quit your day job, you're probably going to want to wait yeah. a little bit. People saying, you know. 
I, I think the best email I'll, I'll get is, I'm ready for advertising, and I, I'll go and look, and they have 10 downloads an episode. Wow. Yeah, I'm like, wow. Well, yeah. No. Um, that's, uh, yeah, I think we're in the, like, couple hundred somewhere around there, and then every once in a while we'll get, like, a spike. We used to put things on Product Hunt, and that got up to, like, a thousand every once in a while, something like that. But, like, I, th- I think you have to get into, like, the hundreds of thousands before yeah, advertising yeah, is a real if thing. If you want to quit your day job, you got to be over 50K an episode. Yeah. 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 So that, I think that's a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything, you're like, you're like, I love your idea. Don't mean to say it won't work, but yeah, ten's not moving the needle for me. Yeah, I mean, today in iOS is not a quit your day job podcast. I've been doing it for ten years. It, you know what today in iOS is? It's buy more iOS products podcast. Yeah. So that my wife doesn't shoot me because it's, the podcast is paying for the products. <laughs> yeah. That, that's why I started the show was to get an iPhone ten years ago. Uh, it, it, and the podcast has served its purpose. Yeah. Uh, it just like app development and podcasting, I think, are very similar in that. If you're doing it for a hobby, yeah, then you're already one. If you're doing it to quit your day job, you're going to be the, you. You have it's like winning the lottery. Yeah, I mean, I uh, even with the podcast thing, I remember um, what was it? Uh, Gimlet Media did a little bit of a, a story on uh, how they do their podcasting right. process, and I mean, to actually get like a that quality okay. of podcast. Yeah. Here, go for it. Let, let's give. Gimlet Media's here's how Gimlet Media makes a podcast: hires a whole bunch of people. Sure. Spends other people's money and then hopes they get a successful show and kills the young that don't succeed. Yeah. And that's a tough, yeah, that's a I mean, tough they're, they're, sell. They're, 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 their processes and their like whole business thing is, is not like, oh, I'm just going to record something and put it up there. It's like they're, they're hustling. I mean, they're, they're like when I started like seeing that that's what actually like the real competition is doing or, you know, like some of the big players are doing, it's like a different but, layer. Ironically, you got someone like Aaron Mankey at Lore, sure, who ha- or Dan Carlin, where there's a team of one or two yeah. that have shows that are bigger than any of the Gimlet shows. Sure. You can do it, yeah, but you have to be lucky, have the right timing, and have the talent. And, yeah. and, and have the topic that's at the right place at the right point. Yeah. Uh, and it's tough to do that. And, and Aaron, by the way, does 35 hours of work for a 25-minute episode every other week right? yeah so, I mean, that's so and dan carlin does two or three months worth of work to get an episode out yeah. so he they put in their time yeah. for that yeah. whereas you know gimlet has 18 people doing yeah you know, but i mean like either either one of those is, it's like an order of magnitude different than the normal right. you know like oh let's have a let's have a chat you know right. type of thing but um i mean for me i uh my co-host is just a great guy and so like we just have a fun How'd you time. guys meet? You, I mean, I, I know you haven't met personally, but yeah, how did you uh, on discover On Twitter, we were talking about, uh, uh, it's literally the only person that I've met on Twitter that I've become like friends with or something like that. Like, it's, it's pretty funny. Uh, I, I think we were talking about lean startup stuff on Twitter. And then I... Because that's really what you're doing is the lean, yeah. whole lean startup Yeah, so we're mentality. basically like just doing like validation of ideas and just testing ideas. So I've gone like, through a lean startup oh, cool. weekend nice. where we went out and had to meet people and pitch sure. the idea. So yeah, <laughs> I've, I've gone through that whole yeah. camp where they've yeah. done that. Uh, the, like, so did you do like the startup weekend? or uh, I've done startup yeah, weekend cool. as well. Nice. Yep. yep. Yeah. And, then, and then I did, a lean, did the lean process. Boot camp or something. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And that was at Kauffman Foundation in cool. Kansas City. So yeah, I've gone through that where we've gone out outside an Apple store and hitting up people and <laughs> ideas and seeing what they thought of it. Yeah, so no. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's fun. I, I uh, mentored a couple of uh, lean or startup weekends, and it's just like bringing people in, and they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna have this business idea, and it's gonna be a PowerPoint presentation." And you're like, "That's that's kind of hilarious." Uh, how about we get out the building and talk to some people, and then <laughs> it's uh, it's like a learning curve. They're like, "Wait." All my beautiful ideas weren't amazing. Well, what's funny is my startup weekend, the weekend I did it, my idea that I pitched had nothing to do with podcasting. Yeah. And at the same startup weekend, there was some other person there pitching an idea on podcasting. Yeah. So I actually wound up helping mentoring him later on for his, because his was one of the ones that made it also all the way through. But yeah, it's just cool. Startup weekends, if you, haven't, if you ever get a chance to do one, folks, you got to do one. Yeah, I think the the biggest thing that they're great for is just like if you've been thinking about potentially looking at like startup industries or technology, but you can't quite envision what it would actually mean like on a day to day like lifestyle. Like a startup weekend is a great way to spend two days like kind of as a real startup founder. You know, like as someone that's pitching people, has to build a team, has to recruit people, has to like get up in front of uh, investory people, get up in, shark, in front of a shark and tank, share, and pitch yeah, your and idea. basically you know have them look at you 
you know, blankly and say, I don't understand, or I think it's a horrible idea, or someone else did it, or whatever, something <laughs> like that. And then, then somebody else comes up and is like, oh, that's a great idea. You know, so there's like the whole, I'd say the whole emotional roller coaster of uh, being a tech founder is like definitely, uh, it's a very great experience or a great way of understanding that. I realized after being on the stage yeah. and going through that and doing the pitching and, and advising, I realized the place you really want to be is yeah. in the shark tank. <laughs> that's a I mean when you when you when you get a little bit away from the process of entrepreneurship you'll notice that quite a few entrepreneurs end up becoming investors uh, because kind of like when you are running a company you're investing your time and you only have x amount of time but if you're putting you know a million dollars into four companies you're basically getting the amount of equity as like if you had worked at that company. Well, it depends on the stage, but like at an early stage, you're getting maybe 10% or something like that. That's about the, that's about as much as a co-founder gets. So basically, like you're saying, okay, I'm gonna put a million dollars in, and that's basically the same as like me working for four years, all my time on this thing. And like the fact that you can just replace man hours with money, and like or you, get get pretty good rewards. Or you could be Peter Thiel. What do you put a hundred thousand into Facebook? Yeah, right. That's a, I mean, yeah. it's it's actually been interesting more like as I've been a little bit longer in this, I've realized that now, I mean, I don't I haven't been successful but just like normal have a little spending money, but like like you know, putting 5 or 10,000 dollars into a friend's startup, even though I don't have that much money, like that's a good thing to do because like, you know, you you have no idea what those things are uh, or well, if you believe in the person. Right. Uh, because like a couple of my friends have uh, or a couple of people I've met along the way one of the things I like to say is like, <laughs> if you come to Silicon Valley and you start working from there, you'll think that you're going to come there and you're going to make a lot of money and you're going to have the biggest startup. When in reality, you're probably wait, wait, that's gonna... not reality. Well, wait a second. Oh, wait a second. No, man. <laughs> it, it 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 is a possibility, and I would say it's a higher probability of doing it there than anywhere else in the world. Still a possibility. But what probably is going to happen is you're going to go to a party one day, and some person that you passed in the hallway is going to be a hundred millionaire four years later and you won't even remember them because like it's just funny like you meet these people and then like somebody in the party of 100 people is probably going to be make it rich but it's uh there was a yeah i used to work in the electronics industry yeah um, way back when in the day and this was 2000 and i think it was like 2002 2003 and on a business trip out to the valley and there was a company it was uh cisco had just bought cisco systems had just bought and we're at an Applebee's, and, and I'm there with the rep, and there's two of the engineers. The conversation turned, the two engineers are turned, and the one guy goes to the other guy, no, if you're going to buy that Ferrari, what you need to do is go to Italy, get it, drive it to France, and then have it shipped <laughs> over. It will save you a bunch of money. Oh, well, yeah. That's, uh, and, and I remember thinking, oh, God, I'm in the wrong industry. <laughs> debating saving money on a Ferrari. Now, that's, uh, you know, mm-hmm. that's a, I, would say, I wouldn't say that's just a first world problem. I would say yes. that's a 0.01% of first world problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that well. It was, uh, oh. yeah. But yeah, it is, uh, it is interesting. I mean, if you look at the, just the times we're living in now where something like software, it, it, you know, it, it functionally is like a factory of the Industrial Revolution time. So like, you could basically like build a factory that you know, makes a lot of new uh, savings and creates a lot of value out of code. Right. You know? it, it's pretty it, amazing. Which I, the irony of it is, is Apple and other companies get beat up because their products are being built outside the U.S. and they're saying, oh, bring those jobs back. Those are the jobs we want back. And I worked at a company where they did assembly work. You don't want to be doing that. Yeah. Coding. And all the, all the people that we see here today, all the software developers. I, mean, it, I think what's really ironic is 10 years ago, if you said you were a software developer, people thought big beige box. Today, you say a software developer, people think apps. And there's so many more of them. There's so many of those jobs out there now. Yeah. And it, it's that's our economy. I wouldn't it, say this is a super uplifting note, but I, you know, I was I went back for uh, the to help with the primaries in Iowa last mm-hmm. year, and I was hanging out with a, a grandfather in mm-hmm. Iowa, and he was just you know he's sitting down with me and he's saying like you know okay my grandsons are playing a lot of video games I don't know what their careers are going to be you know like what what should I tell them to study you know and so I guess the kind of the the current answer is more study computer science or something mm-hmm. like that but like. That's a, that's a pretty big question. How is our economy going to be going later on? Now we're getting deep. Yeah, I know. Okay, so <laughs> let's bring it back. Uh, <laughs> we can edit that one out. Okay, uh, but 
How can people reach you? Joe Mellon, M-E-L-L-I-N, uh, at Twitter, on Twitter. Okay. Or um, I think you can go to Mellon, JoeMellon.com. I have a little contact field there. Yeah. Oh, and one questions. question I like to ask. I see you have an Apple Watch, so I know what's in your pocket. Any favorite apps that you like? Mm. Apps that um, you, that, well, on your home screen that aren't native apps that you like? So go to your first screen. What's one uh, of the apps that aren't an Apple app? Okay. This is just kind of funny. Is I use something called Metromile, which is my automotive, automotive insurance company. And the best part about it is, well, so it's cheaper automotive insurance because <laughs> it's by the mile. So they put a little like... So they little, rate you based on how many miles you drive in that. Yes. So, so it's you mean kind of like... Pay as you go. Pay as you go. It's use, yeah. a use case. Yeah. Basically, they have a little thing that plugs into your car and it you know sends to the cell phone tower or whatnot. But the best part about it is that I do street parking in San Francisco. And my fiance and I both use the car. And before, we'd have to like try to remember where the car was because like we didn't know where we parked it. <laughs> and so I'd be like, oh, did I park it there last week? Or, and we just like start walking around the neighborhood sometimes lose cars or like she'd move the car. <laughs> and then now it just, I open my app and it shows me where my car is at all times. Well, Joe, thank you so much for coming on. Sure. And thanks again to Joe for coming on the show. And sorry about that abrupt end there. Luckily, the recording waited to the end to mess up. That recording was done with two Shure Dynamic Mics and my Zoom H6 recorder. Unlike today's episode, which <laughs> the rest of is being recorded directly to my laptop using the iRig Lav Mics 2-pack, so uh, everything before and after the interview was with the iRig Lav Mics. As mentioned before, the interview links are in the show notes for episode 427 for the sites and services mentioned in the interview. Just go to todayinios.com and look for episode 427 for those links. To the email bag. Hey Rob, ask Siri, what is your favorite food? Regards, John. What is your favorite food? I don't really have a favorite. What is your favorite food? I prefer ontologies. Over easy. What is your favorite food? I don't eat much, Robert. I'll leave it up to you. What is your favorite food? I'm fine with whatever you choose. Thanks again to Casper for their support of TII. And if you go to casper.com slash TII and use promo code TII, all lowercase, you will save $50 off a mattress shipped right to your door. Again, go to casper.com slash TII and use promo code TII, all lowercase. Before we go today, I want to remind you to send in your feedback to the show, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOONDOG. Or record your feedback and email to the show at todayinios at gmail.com. Feedback can be a question or comment for something someone said on the show. It can be a rant or a question you have about something else, an app or product review, good or bad. As long as it's iOS related, it is welcomed. I'm always looking for new artwork that is featured that you can that you've created on an iOS device. Just put some TII branding on it and send it in, especially as a photo in front of your Apple Store. And of course, we're always looking for more music created on iOS device to play on the show. It's your show and your feedback and contributions are greatly desired. Don't forget to check out our moderated Google Plus community by going to todayinios.com slash community. And a quick reminder, if you are an app dev or an iBook author, email me if you want your app or iBook featured in the promo giveaway segment for free. We just need five promo codes or more to give away, simply email me at todayinios at gmail.com and include a 60 second or less audio review of your app or book, iBook, indicating you are the dev or the author. Also, when you send in the promo codes, please make sure to let me know when they expire. And finally, check out the newly updated TII app, which is free to you. Search for TII in the iTunes App Store. It is the best way to consume the show and get, get push notifications each time a new episode of TII is released. It's fully voiceover friendly, of course. Per the latest issue, or update, I should say, uh, we just completely redid push notifications back in, and we have a timer or alarm clock in there as well. Um, push notifications are pretty much instantly delivered to users in like less than five seconds. It's a huge improvement on how it was before, and we also fixed the issue where some users weren't even getting the push notifications with the TI app. So right, go ahead right now, download the TI app, or get an update if you have it already. Until the next time, I'm your host, Rob, reminding you to phone different.
This show is hosted on Libsyn.com and part of the Wizard Media Network. If you are looking for hosting, go to Libsyn.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, for hosting for your podcast and for creation of your own smartphone app. The Today in iOS podcast can also be found on the free Stitcher radio app. Just search for T-I-I.